Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your time. Um, it's on the hour right now, so let's give people another minute or so before we can get started. Okay, um, so it's, it's just a minute past the hour, so let's get started. We've got a few things to cover. Uh, before we do, a couple of house rules. Um, if you've got any questions, please make sure you use the Q&A window to type in your questions. Um, and we've got uh, a set of panelists that we will get to these questions either during this presentation or at the very end. Um, we have a full hour, but we've got plenty of time left for Q&A, so we should get through all of the questions. Um, if I am speaking too quickly, or if you're unclear, if there's any audio issues, please again send it through on the Q&A window, um, and we will be monitoring that throughout the course of this presentation. Very good. Um, so this presentation is being recorded, um, and this will be shared with you along with the slides. Um, so you don't have to take notes feverishly. Please make sure you can listen. And then, like I said, uh, you should have a copy of this recording uh, in a few days after. All right. Um, I will actually be turning off my video to make sure, given the number of uh, participants, to make sure that we don't have any bandwidth issues. Uh, so given that most of you had a chance to see who I am, I'm going to be turning off the video now for the rest of this presentation. Okay, very good. All right, so today's presentation is about the remote connectivity solution uh, that's desired by both IT and OT. Um, so especially given today's uh, current crisis that's happening around, firstly, I hope that all of you and your families are safe and healthy. Uh, but at the same time, what this has really shown, uh, this. Um, what's really shown is the importance of remote connectivity. Interestingly, industrial remote connectivity was on an upward trend already, and there are many studies that have shown that this is expected to be a 50 plus billion dollar industry by the year 2024, which is not that far off, uh, with, well, uh, with quite a number of billion of devices connected to this network. It's also expected to be, so the connectivity, the, the industrial connectivity market, is expected to grow um, to be or to be the next trillion dollar industry um, with some very good CAGR rates, especially focused around the solutions and the connectivity. So before we get stuck into today's presentation, um, just a very quick uh, introduction about myself. So my name is Vishal Prakash. I am the product manager at ProSoft Technologies. I have been with ProSoft for just over two years but I've been in the industrial automation communications industry for over 20 years. Okay, um, so a quick introduction on who is ProSoft Technology. So ProSoft has been connecting disparate systems on the plant floor uh, and, and to the business enterprise systems for over 30 years. Um, our two major strengths are an industrial protocol translation with support for over 40 different protocols, including MQTT and OPC UA and Ethernet IP and DNP3 um, and Modbus and IEC 62850. And the other strength of ProSoft is transporting your data safely and securely either with wired or wireless communications. All right. Um, so, you know, rather than go through and, and explain what remote connectivity is, I, I think we all understand what the benefits of remote connectivity is which is really centered around increased efficiency and reduced costs. We also know that industrial control systems must be safe and secure all the time, even if they're being accessed remotely. So in this session, we'll look at factors that you should consider when selecting the right remote connectivity solution. Um, in other words, what we're looking for is a solution that is both OT friendly and IT secure. So what factors should you consider? Um, you know, there certainly has to be OT, the operational side, there has to be factors. And these factors are typically focused on reliability, on safety, and ease of use, among others. Um, and then there are, of course, security factors to consider. So again, in short, what I just repeated is what you're after is a solution that is both OT friendly and IT secure. Um, so what we're going to do next is to look at some of these factors that I just mentioned in a little bit more in detail. And then we're going to look at, obviously, the solution from ProSoft that would satisfy uh, this criteria. So safety. Um, we all know that safety is paramount. And 
really there should be no difference in terms of the safety process or the safety issues, whether you're operating the machine locally or whether you're accessing it remotely. Um, so if you look at um, some of the steps that you might take uh, to making a changes, uh, to making some changes on a machine, especially when you're local, you typically ask permission from a supervisor or an operator, and you would follow the very important lockout tagout procedure. So the basic principle behind this is that you cannot accidentally energize a machine that can cause human or machine harm. Then you would check the set point. So let's say we're talking about a very simple with a, with a pack like a PLC, you would check the set points, you would review the HMI status to make sure everything is safe before you would connect. Um, with remote access, there really shouldn't be any difference from this because remember safety is paramount. Um, except for this lotto procedure, which is this physical check. When you're doing remotely, clearly you cannot be doing it physically, but the idea there is that when a person is wanting to connect to this machine remotely, you still want to be able to control that process, so you only want to give them permission when it is safe to do so, and you also want the ability to kick them out when a circumstance might change on site. Um, and so this is where, when you're doing remote access, you want the ability to record the results, turn on that remote access, and like I said, revoke that remote access should the circumstance change. Um, clearly, more safety, uh, the better, and this is obviously critical. Um, and what I'd like to use this as an analogy is, I'm not I'm sure, um, you know, if you're, especially if you're a science movie buff, you'd remember the scene from the movie Elysium, where uh, you have Matt Damon there wanting to operate those machines. So if we did not have a process where if he was not able to operate this safely, you might end up something like this, which kind of makes you look cool, but it's really not present. Uh, it's not pleasant. So uh, this safety is exactly like that. It is not supposed to be cool. It is not supposed to be pleasant, but it's supposed to ensure that you and the machine is very safe and secure, whether you're operating it locally or remotely. Okay, um, another important factor to consider is that your solution uh, for remote access or remote connectivity needs to be reliable. Uh, you, you'd want to make sure that the solution you're considering has got SLAs for service level agreements in place. The architecture that they employed to create the solution is robust and redundant, um, and that the underlying technology is more cloud native. And I'm gonna explain why I've used the term cloud native a little bit later in a few minutes. But you wanna make sure that the solution is not repurposed and that there are policies in place to protect against cyber vulnerabilities. You'd also want to make sure that the solution you're looking at is feature proof, because we know in the industrial environment when we make an investment, we expect that investment to last some period um, rather than like a cell phone where you know you might want to change it out every year or you're being to force to change out because there's new features. So that robustness, that industrialness is very, very important, hence the reliability. Another very important consideration for the solution should be the ease of use. Um, things like you want to check to see if the solution has got things like dummies guide. The entire reason why you create a dummies guide is because it is complex and they're trying to simplify it. And that shouldn't be the purpose. You've already dealing with a very complex automation system. You're already dealing with, with a complex process, with something that's got a lot of timing sequence and so forth. So you don't want just the process of connectivity itself to be very uh, strenuous, to be very hazardous. Uh, to be very complex. You want it to be simple. You want it to be easy to use. Uh, you don't want a solution where you've got to spend three days of training just to understand how to use remote connectivity. It does not serve the purpose. Remember, the entire purpose of remote connectivity is you're trying to reduce your downtime. You're trying to reduce your support costs. So you want something that's simple, that's reliable, and of course, secure as well, which we're going to cover that later. But really, this should be a very simple, it should be a very intuitive experience uh, when you're using the solution. So that should be quite an important consideration uh, to look at. 
The next factor you want to look at is scalability. Scalability is important because you know you want the, the ability to scale the solution. And you could be a different type of customer. You could be a machine builder, so you'd want a solution that, for example, allows you to manage multiple customers. Uh, a systems integrator might have the same need. If you're an end customer, especially, say, a large manufacturer, you'd want a solution that would allow you to manage multiple plants, for example, uh, with a single administrator that can give you access based on which plan to the right person and so forth. So, you know, the ability to, to scale the solution easily and quickly to cover different types of scenarios, to cover multiple users, different types of customers is something that's very, very important. Another OT factor should be that the solution is industrial. Um, you know, and I'm not talking, uh, you know, I'm talking about that, that the, the gateway you're using and the appliance you're using is something that's been designed to operate in the harshest of environments. So extended temperature ratings, it's easy to install, it's, you know, things like DIN rail mountable. Um, it has got, uh, you know, it's not made out of uh, sort of cheap plastic um, versus say having a metal enclosure where it is robust and really designed for this very harsh industrial environments. That could be in oil and gas, it could be down um, in a pit, in, in sort of in the wastewater industry, uh, it could be on cranes. So these are very tough, very demanding requirements. So you want to make sure that your solution is not just the software, you know, from the security and the ease of use, but also the hardware is an industrially rated piece of equipment. You also want to make sure that it has all of the right certifications um, and especially if your type of connectivity is with cellular, you want to make sure that you've got the device that follows local regulations in terms of the telecom approvals and so forth. So these are some of the OT considerations that you would want to take into place when considering or choosing the right remote connectivity type of solution. Okay. Now we come to a really important, so this is as important um, as safety. Perhaps I would say that safety and security would sit just about the ease of use. Um, but security, uh, there's also, there needs to be an understanding that security is not a one-stop process. It's not something that you do once and you stop. Security has got to be continuous because nefarious actors do not stop when they fail once. So the solution that you consider uh, to meet your remote connectivity needs really needs to have its guard up all the time. It, it needs to be proactive. It needs to ensure that any threats are addressed proactively rather than reactively. Um, so the solution would really adopt a multi-layer approach to security where the basis include that no single product or technology or method is fully secured and it must address all of the threats, whether they're internal or external. And that's really what it's called as a multi-layered or the defense in depth technology means. So I mentioned defense in depth. There are several layers to this, you know, from the bottom, which is where your control system or the automation devices through to the connection device, through to the network itself, the service, the PC from where you're connecting to. And then finally, a very important part of all of this is the actual process. You still have to have that right processes in place to ensure that the solution is very secure and the people using the solution follow these processes in place. So we are not going to have time to go through every one of these. We let's, we're going to cover a few of these components uh, of this defense and depth strategy. The first one you're going to look at is this gateway. Um, we want to make sure that the gateway or what I'd call the appliance that you're using to establish that remote connection has got things like digitally signed firmware. So this is whereby you cannot download any firmware file into it. It has to be protected, has to be recognized from a trusted source. Um, you'd also want to ensure that the appliance only supports outbound connections. Um, so what I mean by outbound connections is, you know, think about like from your phone uh, perspective. Um, your phone, you have to initiate the connection to connect to the internet or you have to initiate the connection from your phone to access Netflix or to access Spotify and to listen, uh, you know, to download the movie and to watch movies and so forth. So you want to make sure that the appliance is actually not 
initiating a connection, it is responding to connections. You certainly want to make sure that it is encrypted, it is fully secured and encrypted. Um, you want to make sure that there's a separated data and control point. Um, what I mean by that is communications, once especially if you're using these, these gateways, let's say, um, in sort of an always-on type connectivity to connect remote sites to, you want to make sure that once a connection is established, that that channel stays on all the time. Um, let's say when you compare it to you just wanting to access the gateway. Now that's still important, but let's say if you've got remote sites and that they're talking to each other, then you'd want to ensure that the communications is actually uh, happening inter uninterrupted versus you wanting to access the gateway, let's say, to check out the statistics, for example. So again, it is very important, but the remote communications between the sites itself is significantly more important. Um, you certainly want to ensure that you're not using any static public IPs. Um, again, a static public IP means that it is fixed and it really is accessible by anyone. Uh, anybody can, by accident, access the IP address or type it in, they'd be able to access the device and you don't want that. You want to make sure that you're using a private IP and a private dynamic IP that cannot be accessed because most of the times, remember, it is pushing out the communications so it does not need to contact your connecting to it um, where the LAN connection is local but you does not need to know for other devices to connect through to this. Uh, the next thing we want to look at is the network. Um, here we are talking about the physical network. and They can be switches and routers and firewalls. For this, you want to follow best practices for securing these devices and the network. Uh, you'd want to use tools like Tripwire, for example, to maintain configuration, uh, compliance, and notify if there's any changes in these very important devices. So uh, there are software solutions like Tripwire out there that can detect if there's any configuration change in these devices and then log them and notify them as well. And again, just like as in the gateway, you'd want to make sure that you avoid public static IP addresses on these network devices. Okay, this is a very important piece. Um, so we're talking about the internet, which is a service, and there is typically two types of um, internet services. You know, you've got the service that you're actually connecting to the outside world. And that's, um, that needs to be secured by itself, you know, going through the firewalls over the network devices and so forth. But here what I'm talking about is the solution platform or the service that you would use. Um, you want to make sure that the solution that you're using is designed for security. And what I mean by that is, again, this defense of depth, the defense in depth, where it employs this multi-layered level or multiple levels of security, uh, even for things like uh, the actual platform itself using encrypted communications. Um, like I mentioned, uh, encryption at all levels. You want to make sure that the service is protected against denial of service attacks. Uh, you want to make sure that the service provider that is being used that's hosting the solution, so whether you're talking about Amazon or whether you're talking about Azure, they are secured, which we know they are, uh, but it is, it is up to the solution provider that you're choosing to provide you with that, uh, with that guarantee to say, yes, we're using the right level of security of these services. An important part of this is the pen testing where you, where the service solution provider would want to use a third party uh, testing service that's continuously looking at the solution to ensure that any vulnerabilities that may be there are addressed proactively. And this is the big advantage of a cloud-based service uh, because a cloud-based solution is both PC and operating system independent. Um, if you think about it, think about banks. They, almost every one of us today use online banking in some form or another, whether it's on a mobile device, whether it's on a PC. But we never have to install a piece of software from the bank. And there's a good reason for that. That's because they are cloud native solutions, they've got their own solutions, it is very, very secure. And what it means is when you're accessing those, uh, you're always accessing the latest, greatest, and most secure. So it allows the banks to 
uh, proactively monitor their service for any vulnerabilities. And if there is, then there's one location they have to fix and it benefits every single customer. There's no vulnerabilities introduced with when you using a piece of software because even if one person is not updated, it opens up that entire uh, network or that entire piece for any kind of vulnerability. So that's where I say that a cloud-based solution is very, very important. Another very important aspect you want to look at is the audit trail. This is very important because this is something that can be auditable. So you want something that uh, can be saved to a CSV, which you can use for future forensic use. But the entire purpose of the audit trail is that it's very detailed and it provides a, a significant amount of information as to who connected, how long they connected, and so forth. So this would be very, very useful for any type of analysis. And the last part of that service or solution is the authentication. This goes back to that defense in depth. Uh, concept that multi-layered approach to security. So even though you might have an appliance which things like digitally signed firmware, uh, encryption and so forth, you still want to make sure that this level of security is carried all the way through each step. And on the service side, you want to look at things, for example, that apart from just your username and password, uh, that the solution allows you to use, let's say, for example, complex passwords. Um, so not just simple four character or six digit uh, numerical password. You want to make sure that uh, the, other than the password, they're using things like two-factor authentication. And two-factor authentication itself, there are different types. Um, so for example, NIST and the cybersecurity agency here in the United States have said that SMS-based two-factor authentication is not very secure. You'd want to use token-based. So this is whereby it is registered to the email address that you're using, uh, your user ID, and not to a mobile device where you can get access to a, a standard uh, authentication app, and then you would get this one-time use code that is changing constantly. So apart from username and password, you're then entering this one-time use code as well. You also want to do things like uh, single sign-on. Um, so single sign-on is uh, pretty critical, especially in large organizations. Basically, single sign-on means active directory support. So the idea here is that you can use a single username and password to access all applications uh, within that organization. The other big advantage is with single sign-on support, IT can actually manage user and application access. So if you think about the scenario where let's say an employee uh, has been let go or has left the organization or a contractor that you've been using is no longer uh, allowed to work in your organization, by using single sign-on, you can just call up IT and say, can you please revoke this person's access? And when they do that, that change is applied across all of the services. So you're not sitting there and twiddling your thumb and saying, okay, did I forget anything? Will they still have access to the service when they leave the organization? So single sign-on is crucial. I said it's active directory support, and it is something that would uh, really help with the management of the application. And then we have the virtual lockout tagout. So this, like I said, is where, um, uh, from a safety perspective, this is where you're requesting permission before you can actually connect to the automation devices. Okay. Now, having said all of this, it brings us to the actual solution, which is ProSoft Connect. So this is a key takeaway slide uh, that I'd like, you know, even if you guys don't remember anything from today, this would be um, probably the most important slide from today for you to take away, um, is to look at the solution, this ProSoft Connect, this remote connectivity solution that is both OT friendly and IT secure. Um, it is a cloud native application, so all you need is a browser. Um, from an OT perspective, really the solution, and you know, like I said, my background is in SCADA and telemetry. I know how hard it is to create a network and to maintain a network, especially with RF um, or with remote desktop and so forth. All of those pain points have been addressed to really make this super simple, super intuitive to use, where a lot of the heavy lifting has already been done and it's behind the scenes. So from an OT perspective, what you have is a solution that is simple, that is intuitive, that is secure, 
uh, to use. And from an IT perspective, it's got this defense in depth, this multi-layered approach, where it's got all of these security features to ensure that your remote connectivity is safe, secure, and managed. So what I wanted to say in summary um, is, um, again, coming back, this is my cheat slide, um, is to really talk about the solution, which is ProSoft Connect. ProSoft Connect has been in the market for about three years or so. Um, we were a little bit late to the game, but it also gave us a significant advantage in that we were able to look at the solutions out there and really reimagine it. Um, you know, we looked at things like solutions out there being vulnerable to, for example, the dragonfly attack or solutions using uh, software and then trying to adopt it to being operating in the cloud. So it, like I said, it really allowed us to reimagine the solution where we focused on the user experience being intuitive and natural, uh, meaning simple and easy to use, and the solution itself being very, very secure, but at the same time, very friendly. The gateways themselves, they are industrially rated uh, from minus 40, class one, diff two, with all of the right certifications, so very much designed for the industrial user. And today the solution actually supports two types of connectivity. It supports an on-demand connection that can be accessed anytime, anywhere, anyhow. So completely platform agnostic, uh, where you can access, like I said, from any mobile devices, whether it's Android or Apple, um, you can connect to your gateway by really not using having access to all of the security features that I mentioned. So whether you're using it on a mobile platform or on a PC, there is no difference in terms of the security features that are there to ensure that the connection itself is, is fully encrypted. Um, it, it uses that defense in depth, that multi-layer approach to security with everything from two-factor authentication through to be lotto. Um, so it really is true anytime, anywhere, any hour remote access. And the other type of connectivity that the solution offers is the persistent data network or the always-on type connectivity. And to me, this is really the future of remote networking. And uh, believe it or not, I actually grew up um, in Australia, so I understand telemetry really well, where I have been involved in getting very remote locations, uh, talking back to a central location over vast distances with radio, and that technology serves its purpose. But really, RF technology is not involved for quite some time. And today, um, it is not as reliable as what it used to be, uh, especially with spec spectrum. What has changed over the last decade is the ubiquitous nature of cellular coverage. Um, especially uh, globally, cellular coverage today is everywhere. Um, in fact, it is actually the second most abundant thing available on Earth other than the air we breathe. Um, so it is uh, readily available and it is reliable, and the reliability continues to increase exponentially. So the idea with Persistent Data Network is to use the service um, as the backbone to connect geographically dispersed remote sites uh, where they can uh, have this continuous communications back to a central location. So think about applications in water and wastewater, in gas distribution, in power generation where you've got these remote sites and they all need to be able to talk to, to a central location. So this is something that is supported by this platform as well. So in other words, the solution is simple, it is secure, and it is managed. It is managed by ProSoft. Like I said, we've got over 30 years experience really in protocol translation and connectivity, uh, the two strengths of the organization. Um, I'd like to finish off by showing you, again, we're going to make this presentation, these slides, uh, and the recording available, so you've got a bunch of links where you can go and get some additional information on everything that I've spoken today, including a link to our YouTube channel uh, that's got all of the relevant uh, videos, whether it's for training or whether it is uh, to get an understanding of the technology itself. Okay, um, I've actually gone over a few minutes that I expected to, uh, but at this point I would like to open up for questions. Looks like we've got some questions coming in. Okay, 
So there is a question here which says, uh, what is IP whitelisting? That's a fantastic question. Um, and I apologize, I did not cover that in detail, but basically what IP whitelisting means is when you connect to a remote location, you can restrict what specific IP addresses the person that's connecting remotely can access. So for example, think about, let's say you've got a contractor that's connecting to provide you help debug a PLC program. You can restrict their access so even though they create a secure connection and they're connecting to your system, you can only allow them to connect to that very specific PLC and no other devices on the network. So that's what IP listing is, restricting what devices and devices they can connect to. Okay. Um, so we have another question up here, which says, do you have chassis mounted instead of DIN rail mounted for uh, CI and CMX? Um, so our gateways, which I call as an appliance, they are DIN rail mounted. It is not an in chassis solution today. Okay, we have a, another question which says, do we need a good internet connection for ProSoft Connect device to work optimally? How does the device make sure the data is not lost during transmission over the cloud? That's an excellent question. Um, so what we have is uh, tunnel servers which enable this connectivity. And these tunnel servers are, are strategically located around the globe. So we have tunnel servers here in the Americas and South America. We have a tunnel server uh, dedicated to Australia. We have one in Japan, one in Singapore. So we've got these dedicated tunnel servers located strategically around the globe that are redundant, uh, that can switch if one fails to another. So we've got built-in redundancy. And that ensures that there is no latency when you're trying to connect to these remote devices. Now, do you need a good internet connection? If you're, if you're using cellular connection, for example, uh, then as long as you've got a cellular signal, the industrial devices will work. In fact, they will be more robust because they're not moving and they typically tend to use a higher gain industrial antenna. If you've got basic internet service, it should work. It really depends on what you're trying to do. So look, for example, if you're creating a remote connection to let's say look at a video stream, then you would need a decent internet connection. But if you're simply connecting, let's say, to look at PLC tags or a HMI, then a decent connection will be enough for you to connect, provide that level of support, connect to those automation devices and do what you need to do. So I hope I've answered your question with that. There's a question here which says, Does, do you support proxy servers? Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that, uh, Yo. If you could please expand on that. Uh, if you could type in a follow-up question, uh, that would be good. It says, um, does your gateway support? So we do support different types of connectivity. Um, obviously, when you use it with ProSoft Connect, uh, clearly that works best, but we also support OpenVPN and IPsec. Um, so I'm not sure if that answers your question. In fact, with OpenVPN, we actually support uh, simultaneous or parallel connections with the uh, with redundant open VPN service again something that's very unique out there in the marketplace okay do we have any other questions great if there are no other questions then thank you again for your time I really appreciate it um, like I said we will make this recording available uh, we, oh, the question is just coming just give me one second okay our connection to WAN is via proxy service, hence we need to configure the gateway to our proxy server. Can we configure it? Um, you know, I will need to get back to you on the specifics of that. Uh, let me check and get back to you. Uh, if you could please, uh, yeah, I, I believe when you registered, we should have your contact details, so we should be able to get back to you with uh, an answer on that one. Okay, so if there are no qu other questions, thank you again for your time. So if you're certainly interested in learning more about our solution, please feel free to contact your local distributor or our regional sales managers um, located. You can find their details on our website. Uh, the person for Australia is Mr. Gordon Brown. 
Um, I hope many of you have got his contact details, otherwise that will be shared with the recording. Um, and then also we have our sales managers in the uh, Asia Pacific region as well. So again, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it and I look forward to talking to you all soon on another webinar. Thank you again. Bye for now.